Welcome back to Fast Market here on the Schwab Network. It's time for cash tags. For that, let's bring in our next guest. That's going to be Megan Brantley, Vice President of Research at Likefolio. Welcome back to the show, Megan. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, so we're talking Disney. You know, with the different revenue streams that they have within this corporation, it seems like the stock's been under some pressure. It hasn't uh, performed as well as maybe the overall market here at this point. But, you know, one weakness in one segment can offset some of the others, but it doesn't seem to be helping the stock much. What kind of data do you have on this one? Yeah, so whenever we look at a name like Disney, I think last quarter early profitability in its streaming segment still wasn't enough to offset that park weakness. And when we look at things now, you know, streaming and parks are two areas of Disney's business, luckily, that we have really nice insight into. And so I think first we can dive into streaming. And a couple of things have changed since last quarter on the streaming front. Disney has worked hard to crack down on password sharing. I think that they started that in September and also raised prices for some of its streaming products, Disney Plus and Hulu. And so this is one of those things where now we look to see, okay, is there churn? Do we actually see an increase in new signups and new subscriptions? And I think in some good news for Disney, we do see signs of an uptick in new subscriptions. Those new signups in the month of October were up about 11% year over year on our end, which is pretty promising. And then we also do not see major signs of churn. So whenever we look at consumers who are talking about canceling Disney Plus or canceling one of those Disney services, we don't see a price increase being a real inhibitor. We don't see this, um, or we actually we do see the password sharing crackdown working to bring those subscribers um, into Disney's ecosystem as paying subscribers now. Um, so I think that on the streaming front, we see a little bit um, more strength than we saw last quarter, but then on the parks front, we see a little bit more weakness. We see um, searches for Disney parks passes, it's um, Super Genie, um, Disney tickets, Disney trips, you know, consumer mentions of planning Disney vacations, those are continuing to temper versus last quarter. And I think Disney alluded to this, it expects a flattish um, parks revenue in Q4, and we're certainly seeing that. So a bit of a mixed bag on our end heading into this earnings event. You know, Megan, there's so much to talk about with a company like <laughs> Disney, like from the summer, right? When the middle class consumers couldn't afford to go to Disney and the more affluent consumers were going to Europe. So Disney kind of missed out on both those demographics. I mean, we know that you know, the media has got its own problems, but I'm gonna list you five different areas. Media networks, parks and resorts, studio, consumer products, interactive. Which one's the key here to get going? Is it as simple as ESPN, you know, carrying the load there for for the networks. What is it I think that 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 gets them back? Because it looks like they're getting streaming fixed, but they yeah. still. And then something else gets weak. Yeah, I think that for us, really, the two major areas, like I said, are the streaming and the parks, where we have a lot of insight. And I think that this is where investors are looking as well. And on the streaming front, we do see signs that. Disney is getting its house in order. You know, last quarter it posted a $47 million profit, and a year ago in the same quarter it was a $512 million loss. And so I think that these price hikes, crackdown and password sharing, um, continued effective leveraging of its ad tier is really helping to prop up that streaming unit and make it more profitable. So we, we expect continued expansion in this segment. I think really what's been weighing on Disney is of late is this uh, pullback in its parks unit and just lack of performance there. I think that Disney is certainly investing in its parks. I think it's planned about a $60 million investment in building out new parks experiences. And this is also one of those things that, like you mentioned, is a, a macroeconomic headwind for Disney that when things um, improve, the consumer is likely to return to Disney parks. It doesn't look like consumers are rejecting Disney as a brand. They're just feeling a little bit more of a price crunch right now and being selective about vacation. So this could be a temporary headwind for Disney for sure. And I think another area moving forward, Disney has touted, it's got a lot of 
um, content slated for the upcoming year. I know that there's a new Moana movie coming out. There's a new Mufasa movie coming out, Toy Story. So it's got a lot of content that it expects to be able to leverage, you know, in the movie theaters, but also in its own streaming platform. So there's definitely reasons, I think, long term to be optimistic about this name. Uh, Megan, I was looking at their, your second chart, a year over year change in visits, a 90 day moving average. And I'm looking at Disney Plus up 20%, and I'm sitting there scratching my head, and I was like, hey, how could that be, right? Because, I don't know, I, I use Disney Plus on, on a month-to-month -month basis. If I want to watch something, maybe I'll subscribe to it for a month and then cancel, right? Is this the Taylor Swift effect because her era's tour came out on Disney Plus, and that was probably over the last four or five months. Is that why you're seeing an uptick there, and what kind of earnings score do you have on this one? I think that a lot of the uptick, I'm sure Taylor Swift certainly helped for sure. Yeah. And I will say that in my household with a one and a half year old, Disney Plus is constantly on the TV. So um, this would be the can never cancel in my household. But um, we see a lot of traction, especially with these password sharing crackdowns in um, getting people to who previously weren't paying subscribers that are now paying subscribers and are now using Disney Plus. I think that they'll get a nice boost or at least have some nice guidance to say about that uptick um, as a result of those efforts. Another thing Disney seems to be doing better is its recommendation engine. This is something that it talked about, that it doesn't do a good job of leveraging its content library and saying, hey, you liked this, why don't you try this? And it's starting to get better with that. I don't know if you guys have Disney Plus and Hulu also, but it's integrated its libraries now, so you don't have to switch from one app to the other if you have it bundled, making that content discovery um, a little stickier across the board from a household perspective. Um, but for us, we don't actually have an official earnings score on Disney. This is just this is such a massive company. It's really hard to nail down. But we do see some outside strength in streaming. We see some outside weakness in parks. So I would say um, our score is, is would be neutral, would be what I can imagine. But I do think that you could have a slightly or a cautiously bullish outlook, especially long term, just as it gets those streaming costs um, under control and continues to grow. Yep, uh, we'll continue to watch that. And don't forget about the hurricanes because that disrupted a bunch of their cruise lines. If the parks were closed for a couple days, then that's big money uh, right there. So we'll continue to focus on that. All right, great stuff. Uh, thanks, Megan. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. You too. All right, that's Megan Brantley, VP of Research at Likefolio. I would like to be cautiously bullish. However, this stock is